Welcome to the Janine Boland Show, where we share tips from around the globe as we guide practical people with their finances using money tips, increase their incomes through side businesses, and maintain their sanity by staying in their creative zone. Hey, welcome to the Janine Boland Show, and I just wanted to say Happy New Year. We are in January of 2022, and I know, honestly, I never thought I'd live this long, to be quite frank. And what's amazing about 2022 is the very first guest I have for the year is Gary Barnes. Now, Gary Barnes and I go way back in the Wayback Machine. He's known as the Breakthrough business mastery coach. He was my coach for a period of time. And then my business grew and I was like, thank you, Gary. But you know what? One of those things about coaches is you always reach back. You always reach back because why? This guy is credited with like nine books. He's been on ABC, CBS, NBC, Fox. He's had his own TEDx talk. He's been on PBS. And I think the most important aspect of him is that he understands what it's like to deal with adversity. Now, after 2020, you may say, yeah, what we all have experience with that, Janine. I don't understand why this is any big deal. I don't get that. I'm like, well, this is a guy who in 1988 was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis and he was told he was going to be in a wheelchair or dead in 10 years. Guess what? It's been years and years since then. He's still rocking. He's still rolling. Gary Barnes, thank you so much for being on the show today. Well, Janine, it's always such a blast and a privilege and honor to be here. And, uh, you know, I just thank you so much. It's really great. Well, I appreciate all the work that you helped me with when I was a fledgling entrepreneur here in Colorado. And now that uh, my business is like taken off and it's tripled since uh, a couple of years, in the last couple of years, it's tripled and the shows have gone nuts. What I wanted to chat with folks about was 2022. Okay, so we're over the major hump of what 2020 was all about. Uh, Things are different than they've ever been before. So what is some advice that you can give business owners, creatives, and just people at large that are dealing with things they never expected that they'd be dealing with? What is, what would you recommend for 2022? Well, you know, that's a very complex question. (laughs) Thank you so much. You know, you don't think I was going to be simple. (laughs) Did you think it was too simple? I I, I tell you what. (laughs) But I think the most valuable thing that we can look for is not just what went wrong in the last year or two, but what, what, what just went right, but also what went wrong. Because in these times of what we would call adversity, there are, Dennis Waitley calls uh, adversity seeds of greatness. Uh, you know, uh, Norman Rock, or not Rock, well, Norman uh, Vincent Peale talked about when a problem comes walking down the hall, he says, where have you been? I've been preparing for you my whole life. But what we have a tendency to do is want to put a Band-Aid on a cut without using antiseptic. We don't maybe know, we know where the cut came from, but we don't want to take care of it. And in reality, when that cut heals, it is actually stronger in the skin there than before it was cut. And so as we look at 2020, 2021, one of the questions that I've been asking my clients is, well, what excuse are you going to use? in 2022 that worked in 2021 and they look at me like I have three heads and I'm going no we've made excuses for what went right and what went wrong and are you going to what are you going to change what are you going to do differently this year to multiply your benefit that you wanted in 21 but maybe didn't happen or like I'm so proud of you and you know like oh my coaching clients you're like my kids I've told you this and I, I just go I just you know, it's really great to see everything working, but you took everything that I had to offer and didn't just sit on it. You actually implemented it. But more importantly, you made that 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 influence that I was able to give you and make it your own. You just didn't duplicate Gary. And so looking at what it is that uh, you anybody in their business, take an inventory. What, what is it that they want? What is it that they're willing to pay the price for? But what are they going to change? You know, that old adage, doing the same thing over again, expecting a different result is the, you know, the, the definition of insanity. And so I think in a very broad sense, that's what we could do right now to make a really big difference at the end of 2022. 
And one of the things I wanted to share with uh, you folks is that uh, when I first came to Kerry Barnes, he is the coach that is also known as the traction coach. And what he can do is he can help you get your business from where it is now to a hundred thousand dollars. That's what, that's what he promotes. That's what he does. And he has this wonderful program, a uh, business boot camp, if you will, where you spend three days. This is, uh, we have to do a lot of it online these days, but we spend three days with him and he walks you through every system. And what was wonderful is he had this three ring binder. And all I did was I studied that three ring binder for several months and every month I, or every week, actually, I was implementing a new system and he had all these systems of routines. Now I'm very much systems based anyway, as many of you know, from my previous shows. And so those systems and those routines are what got me to the hundred thousand dollar level. And then once I hit that, then I knew I needed to move on and really grow in my own way. And so one of the things that is very much of value with a coach like Gary is that you start off using everything they tell you to use, you use it their way, and then you don't make it your own till you hit that marker that they've set for you, which is making that $100,000 a year in your business, then go about doing a lot of things differently or put your own flair onto it. So I just wanted to say, Gary really helped me get there. So when he talks to you about where I was going to lead you, Gary, into the, the get statements, because those were something where you took an idea from another very much a self development motivational speaker, but it didn't quite resonate. And then you changed it just ever so slightly, and that gave you the traction you needed to move forward. So if you don't mind, share that story oh, with us. Absolutely. And what I was wanting to spin off a little bit about what you just said of making it your own. I look at coaching as the training wheels, but there is a certain point where you get your balance on a bike and you don't need the training wheels anymore. And then you customize the trip where you go, how you go. You may be jumping over logs and boulders and whatever, or just meandering through the woods. But what I had learned is that affirmations for me really didn't work because they really are a lie. We say, I weigh X number of pounds. And then you look in the mirror and you go, no, you don't. Or you say, I'm a millionaire. And you look at your your bank account and you go, no, I'm not. And so you have this inner conflict. And there was someone that I had learned a process that was called must statement. And my personality is such that you tell me I have to do something, I resist it. I'm not proud of that. I just know that's the way I am. And so I was sitting down one day and saying, what could I do? And I I thought about what uh, the word came to me was get. And then I made an acronym around that called Great Expectations Today. And what a get statement is, is a future result stated in the present tense. And so what we're doing is going into our future and making it so real that we can see it, taste it, and feel it, putting a stake in the ground and putting a rubber band around it and coming back to our present day. And then what literally happens, we are no longer going towards what we want, we're being pulled to it. And what, in a physiological sense, what we're doing is rebooting the brain for success. We're reprogramming the reticular cells to what is important to it. So it sees the opportunities, sees what is, you know, before is that where we want to go. And then we have that ability to start the trip. Now, the thing is, is that a lot of people today want the microwave model of success. I I have yet to find it. (laughs) Now, they (laughs) can go fast or slow or whatever, but the get statement helps us focus in on the eight to 10 things that are most important to us in any given year where we are able to, you know, balance out the personal, the financial, business, uh, mental, spiritual, all of those things. If we're not out of balance, we're never going to be truly successful to have it to be sustainable. But the guest statements, I do them every morning. I still, I've been doing them for over 25 years. I was just realizing that today. And the the ability for this to be simply integrated into our subconscious so easily, but it has to be done in in the right way. Because sometimes what we put as a get statement or people do is actually the action step to a get, to the result that we want, instead of the actual result. And they get frustrated with it. And when we deal with actual dollar amount, that's really important because the dollar amount we put down is actually the dollar amount we want to spend and benefit from not just to receive. 
And that's one of the things I enjoyed about your get statements was uh, a lot of people were saying, okay, I would like to achieve X amount of dollars, you know, with my business, whatever. And I will do that by December 30th of whatever year. And I remember you were the first person that I ever heard say, why on earth would I want to work through the end of the year? I am make all my gut statements to end on December. And I can I think at the year it was December 15th, that particular it's, it's still year. Is. It's still it still is. is. It's always, yeah. It's always the 15th. Right. And so it was one of those things that I just was like, oh my gosh, you're absolutely right. I do not want to work through the holidays to achieve whatever it is. And, and so I tried it the very first year I talked to you about it. I tried it and it was amazing. I was able to accomplish everything. I got, I hit all the markers that I had for myself and I did it by December 15th, which is an on to this day. I still shut down the business for that three weeks, uh, December and the first week of January. So talk to us a little bit about, yes, these get statements. So kind of what is, do you have a formula for them that you, you enjoy using? What is it that you do when you're accomplishing well, that? Number one, you write it down every day the same way. And uh, right now, I, I think in the next segment, I can actually break out what a get statement looks like. But the important thing is to write it out every single day in hand, not on your computer. And because what we do is we have three ways that we take in information, auditory, visual, and kinesthetic. And so when you write it, we see it. When we see it, it, it's it, when we're writing it, it is also kinesthetic. We're moving. And so we've got the first two. And I don't know about you. Some people lie about this. But when we read, we're actually talking to ourselves. So it doesn't have to be out loud, but we're actually connecting all three ways that we take in information and integrate information into our subconscious by doing this. And it takes no more than maybe 10 to 12 minutes a day to do it. And it's really phenomenal. And by the way, it works whether you believe it or not. You don't have to believe that it works for it to work. And that's one of the most powerful, powerful things that I took away from the very first day of your boot camp. Anyway, this is Janine Bullen, and we will be back after the break with Gary Barnes. And we're going to be describing something that a lot of people give flack on, and that's vision boards. They say they don't work. And we're going to talk to you about that and how they actually do work very well at achieving the goals that you've set yourself for 2022. See you after the break. Welcome back to the Janine Boland Show, and I am here today with Gary Barnes, and we are talking about how to start the new year off right, how to go about deciding what it is that you want, and how to set up systems and routines that will get you where you want to go. We were describing, before we left for the break, get statements. And so, Gary, you didn't have an opportunity to really break down what a get statement was or how it was built or what it what it is encompassing. So if you don't mind, now we have some time. Go ahead. <laughs> Tell us okay. about it. <laughs> no worries. You know, one of the things, get statements, it's such a new concept for people that I use the example that is common for everyone is that we have an X number of dollars that we want to receive in any given year. So I use this example for that because it's the most common thing. So what it looks like is I receive $100,000 with $80,000 net revenue by December 31st, 2022. Now, don't worry about the numbers. I just use those numbers as examples. But let me break it down for you. I received. I didn't say I worked hard, I got lucky, I got whatever. No, I'm just in a position of receiving. And so there's a lot of times that we will have opportunities and we don't see them as opportunities, but that's actually where that revenue is going to be able to come from. Uh, Janine, I know you, you and I, we at times will speak on stages where they go, well, how much did you make? I go, well, I didn't get paid. I actually spend money to go at times and whatever. But the money flows out of that. It's an organic thing. So it's a truly a position of receiving. And then the two numbers. And you're big on this, I know, as well, because you, you teach a lot about money. And I'm a recovering financial planner and all that stuff. And But $100,000 with $80,000 net revenue. When people, I ask people, what is their, their money goal for the year? They normally give me one number. And guess what? It's always the big number but they don't realize at that moment that they don't get to spend that big number for their 
personal need. That's the gross number. So making sure that that smaller number is big enough to meet the desires that they want. And I use that 20 to 30% margin, depending on what business it is, because you got taxes, cost of doing business, all the things that go along with that. So having two numbers, and the last number is the net number, which is the number you get to spend. And then the word buy, it's not on. And what I find with people is that, oh golly, I, you know, I, I can happen early. I go, sure. Uh, in fact, this is where it's important is that sometimes I just had a, a brand new coaching uh, client come on and they said they were going from basically a $70,000 income stream to a million dollars next year. And I went, well, that's exciting. Uh, can we break it down a little bit smaller? And we can do that by using the word buy because you get to that $100,000 mark at, in, in March. Then we go up to, a, to you know, they, we just keep increasing it. But when the number is too big in the beginning, it's exciting. But when you start getting behind, you start getting to the point of it's too much, it's too big. I'm never going to do it and you give up. So the word buy is important. And then we get to December 15th. And it, 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 you explained it so beautifully. It really is that, you know, we have, uh, we work I, for years. I work till December 31st every single year. My family wasn't happy with me. I wasn't happy with me. I was grumpy. And then I wanted to, I was not refreshed, ready to start the new year. And it was just, I was on a hamster wheel. So this gives us that ability to rejuvenate, to be creative, enjoy the holiday, to enjoy what we've created. How many people don't appreciate and really embrace the results that they have? It's always uh, J. Paul Getty was asked one time, how much is enough? And he said, just a little bit more. <laughs> I, 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 I hate that, that quote, but how many people are on that to where it's never, ever enough? They never cross the goal line. So that's the framework of what a, a guest statement looks like. It's a future result stated in the present tense. And it's one of those things that it sounds kind of hokey when you're talking about it. But for anybody like myself and several of the other folks that I've worked with, uh, this is incredibly powerful stuff. And so I highly recommend that you get out there and you buy uh, Gary Barnes' Get Statement book. It's in a book format, so you can read through it. So if you're inspired by this podcast, I highly recommend that you do that. And something else that is a part of the process is the use of vision boards. Now, I know a lot of people give vision boards a bad rap. They say, I put a vision board together and it doesn't work. And I go, how do you know? And I said, have you looked at it recently? And it's always amazing to me how many people will look at their vision board and be in shock <laughs> by how many items actually have achieved. They just haven't looked at it. So if you don't mind, Gary, talk to us a little bit about vision boards and why you started using them. Well, again, vision boards really kick into the reality of what it is. It's a, 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 a physical manifestation in a visual form of what we want as a result. And um, years ago, uh, my wife and I, or more, more me than my wife, uh, wanted a Cadillac sedan to build. And so went to the dealer, got one of their pretty little things, cut it up, put it on the board and everything. And I put it on a wall to where I had to walk by it every single day. And after months and months, there was a situation that uh, a college uh, schoolmate of my wife's called up and said she was getting a divorce. She had a car to sell and didn't know if we were in the market to buy a car. And she goes, well, yeah, we were thinking about it. And we went up and bought the car. It happened to be a Cadillac. And so we bought it, brought it home. It was sitting in the garage. And the next day I'm walking down the stairs and I look at the board and it hit me between the eyes because I hadn't realized it until that moment. It was the same color, the same model, the same year. Everything on the board was sitting now in my garage. <laughs> and it was just like, holy cow. And so that's when I phrased the thing. Don't put an ugly picture of a baby on your vision board because you will get it. <laughs> it will happen. And it's one of those things that 
I didn't start working with uh, vision boards in a official and very formal way. Like it didn't, it wasn't a part of my routine for my business. Now I had done it when I was in college and stuff like that. But when I became a business owner and really seriously started growing my business in 2015, that's when I started the vision boards. And then every year we'd have a big party because I have four kids and we'd get together and we'd all build out our vision boards. And of course they said theirs was boring because, you know, with school, you have certain and things that you just have to do but what's interesting is as they've gotten older they're like now we're going to do a vision board again this year right mom we're going to do you know i have people that actually ask for it now it's another interesting fact is i actually have people that tell me i don't want to do a vision board you can't make me do a vision board and i said that's true i cannot therefore i will not coach you <laughs> because i am not going to sit there so talk to us a little bit gary about why there is a resistance to using a vision board? Is it that people are scared? What is it? Because when I ask them about it, a lot of times they, they tell me, I don't know. I just don't want to do it. Well, it reflects back to even get statements. It's because it's so simple. We have been taught for complexity. You, you go, uh, there was a, a radio host on one of the stations here in Denver that her father was an attorney. And so she came to him one day and said, why is all of the documents that I see in the legal field so complicated? And he said, well, because you wouldn't come and pay us if it was in plain English. And so we have actually been trained. We have medical, my youngest daughter-in-law is a, a, a doctor doctor and my two oldest, uh, uh, my oldest son and his wife are both chiropractors. And you get into medicine and all these names and whatever. So we have been trained that if it's not complicated, not confusing, there is no value there. And the, what they don't understand is a lot of things that we put on our vision boards, we have never experienced in real life. And so how do you, the illustration I give for people is that if you're speaking to someone that is visually impaired or blind, and you say, well, let's go see a mountain. They have no idea what a mountain looks like. And the same thing, what happens with a vision board, we're allowing our blind spots to actually see the reality in picture form so we can start putting our arms around. We can see us in a car or in a location or whatever it may be. The, the, I had this watch that I'm wearing right now. It was on my vision board and it was a get statement. And I could see every time I wrote the get statement, I saw the watch because I had the picture of the watch on my vision board. And if people would just do it, and do it with, they don't have to understand or don't have to believe again that it works for it to work. I've had so many people tell me, I'm going to do it to prove you're wrong. And it works. And I go, oh, okay. <laughs> I always tell people, prove me wrong. You know, you know, I teach oh, yeah. uh, money principles and stuff. And I always say, just do it to prove me wrong. And <laughs> it's one of those things that begrudgingly, they come back to you and say that it works. So um, how were you introduced to vision boards? When did they kind of become into your field of influence? You know, it's really strange because I'm one of the older dudes out there, starting with Jim Rohn and, uh, you know, some of the uh, Zig Ziglar, the, the older uh, influencers of the time. Uh, and they all talked about creating a vision. Uh, in fact, when I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, nobody actually realized the power of visualization, not vision board, but the visualization, which is virtually, you're creating a movie in a visualization, and I love movies. But what happens is that uh, I started seeing pieces of the puzzle, and now it's being taught in a, you know, a synchronized form. Back then, there wasn't. And so it was like I saw pieces, and I started attaching to what organically seemed, you know, logical. And other people told me, well, you're just being weird. And I'm going, well, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> tell me okay. something I don't know, right? <laughs> yeah, like the air quotes special. And, but when they started seeing the results, and including my family, families are sometimes the best and sometimes the worst. And especially when things happen and they go, well, it wasn't your vision board that did it, it wasn't your get statement, you just got lucky. And I'm going, well, okay, I don't want to stop because lucky I like. I like it when I'm lucky. Thank you very much. 
So when we, we're going to cut for commercial here. And when we come back from the break, uh, Gary and I are going to talk about some of the things that are systems and routines that we do every year. And every year we set up, uh, some people call it goal setting. It really is more targets. We set targets for ourselves. And when we come back from the break, we'll talk to you a little bit about how you do this simply and without stressing yourself out. So see you in a bit. Hey, welcome back to the Janine Boland Show. And I am here with Gary Barnes today, who is known as the Traction Coach. And the reason I'm so excited that he is here on the very first show of the year for us is because he was my coach for years, helped me get my business from where it was to $100,000 a year, which is what are the results that he talks about. And one of the systems, only one of the systems of the many that he taught me was get statements. And those get statements I still use today. I still use vision boards, even though I had learned about vision boards before. He just really, Gary helped me really be more inspired on using them and more uh, more targeted in what I was looking for. But one of the things about get statements is there are several questions that Gary asks, not only in the books, but in his boot camps that he has, where he talks about, you know, what is it that you want to have? What is it that you want to do? And the one that really was the trigger for me was, what is it you want to be? And when I hit that question, that stalled me out and I had to really sit and focus on it. So Gary, if you wouldn't mind sharing with us a little bit about, number one, how did you come up with these questions? Because they, all five of them that you use are very intense. Like it's not something that you can just rattle off in, you know, 15 minutes. It it took me a couple of hours to really hone in on what you were talking about. Well, you know, where they came from, people have given me at times where they say, well, that was really brilliant. And I'm going, well, I was really smart to listen. (laughs) You you, you understand this. There's times when I call it the nudge. And when I'm sitting down, I'm going, well, what are the questions? Because I'm a questions guy. I'm a questions coach. I use a process that is Socratic. I look for a question that leads me to an answer that leads me to a better question. So I'm really comfortable about questions. And the five questions that, and also about balance, because the balance came out of my being out of balance. My entire career as a financial planner made a tremendous amount of money, but I created a lifestyle that my family enjoyed that I did not participate in. It was all messed up. But the five questions are, what do I want to do? What do I want to be? Where do I want to go? What do I want to have? And what do I want to give? See, the give one is another one of those things. I was speaking at a conference uh, last month in Arizona, and I asked the audience, I said, is it better to give or to receive? And almost always, when I asked that question to an audience, they said, oh, it's better to give. I follow up with a second question. How can you give without first receiving? And so all these these questions interlock. They don't stand alone. They form a balance, a wheel, if you will. And when you are really looking at it, it also takes off the, it really is, they're they're what if statements. What if I could be a millionaire? What if I could give a million dollars? What if, whatever the, and it gives that little kid inside of you permission to truly dream. You know, when, when we're young, if somebody says, what are you going to be when you grow up? You say an astronaut or whatever, you know, you, there, there's no limitation to what we can be. And we learn to put that part of us down, that we get into a rut. We get into, well, that's what I deserve. And that's the biggest thing that I find with people is that negative belief is I don't deserve. But when we ask these questions and truly listen, just see, we have, we have a tendency to ask a question and then answer it. You and I, and one of the, I've seen you do this, that we ask questions and we shut up. We wait for the answer. And if we'll just listen to that intuitive side, it will scare you. I'll, I'll tell you that. It will scare you because the number or where we're going or what we're, what does it mean to be? You know, we're, we're always do, just doing things. And there are things that we have to do to get to do. And, you know, but the, the reality is that when we take off the brakes, when we take off limitations, it's amazing what we're able to accomplish if we give ourselves 
permission to do it. And that's a, a big key to it as well. So one of the challenges a lot of people have is, and I'm one of them, you know, I'm raising my hand here. I'm one of them is that, you know, you don't know what you don't know. You don't know what you don't know. You don't know where your blind spots are because that's why we call them blind spots. And so one of the things that I found so helpful with the get statements is they really helped me see where I had these blind spots. And so do you have any recommendations for, for people on, we talk a lot about limitations. So what are some ways that people can kind of let go of things or improve their situation uh, by letting go of those limitations? Because it, as an example, people say all the time, okay, so get out of your comfort zone. The problem is you're too comfortable. Well, I disagree. I'm very uncomfortable right now because I don't know what my blind spot is. So help me out, Gary Barnes. What are some things that you've experienced or working with all the hundreds of people that you have that can kind of help people understand, okay, where am I limited? What are some of the top three things that you've experienced? Well, you know, and that's a great question. Uh, I've never had anyone ask it to think like that, by the way. Um, I, I think the first thing is to understand that fear is normal. Fear of something new is always going to be something new. Once you've done it, then it becomes, you know, something that we can predict. Uh, stepping out into uh, a risk factor where we're sharing with people, I'm going to do this, and then if it doesn't happen, will I look like an idiot or a fool, or you know, be you know, belittled in some way? The other is to become comfortable with being uncomfortable. And the analogy, the illustration that I use with that is the hermit crab. The hermit crab finds a shell; it doesn't grow its own shell. He has to you know, find a, a shell to live in. But when he gets to a certain point, he either has to leave the shell or die. But between the time he leaves the shell and finds a new bigger home, he is totally exposed. And when we, the, the, the reality for me is that there is no way for me to get to point B without literally leaving point A. I can't just take a stepping stone. There, there's normally too big a gap. And there's a point where we get to start trusting ourselves. We have learned not to trust adults because adults were big and this is something that's been ingrained in us as children. But what did we become? We became an adult. And then when, you know, the what I'd like everybody to do, the next time you're in a restaurant, just pay attention to the other people around you ordering food. They'll ask the, the server, What's good here? Is it good? You know, I want this. What is this? Or they'll ask the people around the table, what are you having? Who cares? Order what you want. We don't trust ourselves. And when we go outside of ourselves for an answer, normally what it, it doesn't work. And then the first thought is, well, I knew I shouldn't have done that. Then why did you? And so when we're embracing these new ideas, it's just the feelings, your feelings are absolutely normal. And as we get into that, in fact, um, uh, the, the Virgin Airline guide, Sir Richard Branson, right. says, if you're not afraid, you're not out there far enough. Now, he goes a little further than I want to go at times. <laughs> but the thing is, is that being uncomfortable is just saying, I'm ready for something new. And one of the things uh, that I'll piggyback on is Leonardo da Vinci in his book, uh, his advice to artists. He frequently talks about creative tolerance, where you are uncomfortable because you do not like what you see on your palette in front of you. You don't like what you see on the canvas, but you're willing to wait until you're inspired to move to the next step. And that can be a very uncomfortable period of time. I have to say that I like your hermit crab analogy much better than Leonardo's because not everybody is staring at a blank canvas trying to figure out what to do next. So the hermit crab is a much better analogy. So as we get ready to wrap up uh, this particular segment, what are some other things that you would recommend for people who struggle with the vision board? It, there is a fear factor there of if I put it down, oh my God, I just may get it. That's another thing I've, you and I both experienced with our clients when it came to money. 
you know, it, the, to let go of the old paradigms was very comfortable and it's terrifying to think, oh my gosh, money will change me in some way. So the same with the vision board. So love your comments on that. You know, it's a, another great, great question. Uh, it's not a fear that I have found in clients, they say, what if it works too well? And I get inundated with too much money, too many clients, or if I have money, well, people want it. I have had a client that that was a major block. The more money she was going to receive or was receiving, she knew her family was going to be asking her for it. And she, there was a family dynamic there that was getting in the way of her receiving. And so we had to build a process for her to protect herself in that arena. And so the, 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 the fear of actually getting it, see, most people think that they don't do things because they're afraid of failure. And I don't believe that. I believe people are more afraid of success because afraid of failure would mean that they weren't in business. They weren't doing whatever they were doing already because they already took that leap. But they have these blocks. These in, in Australia, there is a bush called the wait a minute bush. And what it is, it's almost like the Venus flytrap. It has an electrical charge somehow. And as you walk by, it has little thorns on it. And it actually reaches out and grabs you and says, wait a minute. And so these beliefs that we have that are running around in our subconscious are actually those wait a minute bushes to where they're saying, okay, you want this, you're achieving, and then we'll sabotage what we actually want. In relationships, it's come closer. And I'm putting my hand up to Janine and putting my other hand saying, come closer, but stay away, come closer, stay away. And so we have this double mind message. And this is where people start asking me, are you a life coach or a business coach? And I say, I'm a business coach that includes life because I truly believe that 80% of success in anything we do, whether it be business, relationships, whatever, is psychological and emotional, 20% tactical. The challenge is everybody looks for that magic being that magic bullet that's going to make everything perfect. And so they go out and buy a lotto ticket. I, never I know. I'm a lotto ticket. <laughs> Primarily because I don't buy them. Right, exactly. And I don't want to put my hopes and dreams into a lotto ticket. Okay, as we wrap up this third segment, when we come back with Gary Barnes, we are going to be kind of giving you the sum up. What is the sum up of everything that we've been talking about as far as vision boards and get statements and how do you go about this goal setting thing when every time I set up goals, I fail, that kind of thing. What we're going to do is help you with some of the routines that we use pretty much every day that give us that edge so that we create the life that we want and you don't have to worry about being one of those positive people. You can just do this routine and it will help you out. See you after the break. Hey, welcome back to the Janine Boland Show. And I am here with Gary Barnes, who you may know him if you've been anywhere in the Denver, Littleton area, or if you have been anywhere truly in the desert Southwest, you have heard of this guy with his business boot camp. He has people that come around throughout internationally. I mean, we've had even people from Newfoundland that have shown up and have networked with us, but he's known as America's traction coach. And he helps people that are starting in business or have been in business a couple of years and they're not not getting the return on their investment that they think they should. He helps you get to that $100,000 level. And to me, that is worth the time. So Gary, talk to us a little bit about your boot camp because you're kind of changing the format since it used to be in person, all that uh, used to run it multiple times a year. Tell us what's happening now with the business. You know, thank you so much. And yes, we, with the situation over the last couple of years, we've gone to a hybrid to where we could only have a very small number in a very large room. And so we've kept going and now we have come back to a in-person event uh the one that is coming up this coming september will be my 41st event that i've produced so i've been doing them a while but it's not 41 years i want to make that clear I, i used to do multiple events and i really started to realize that people needed that that time to implement between times and i didn't want to be just that infusion of you know, giddy up and, you know, that excitement. And so we're doing it and I've actually added an extra day. So it's a four day. The first day is totally an education day. 
where we're diving deep into strategies and actual components of what to do. And then the, the boot camp is after that. So that, that uh, they've evolved. And what I have learned to do as you is we've learned to listen to the people we serve and this is what they've been asking for. So it will be coming up this September, number 41. And I loved last year when we were able to celebrate number 40 with you, you had a dance party. It was wonderful. Uh, my kids and I showed up. It was fantastic. So I highly recommend that you show up for Gary Barnes boot camps. They are worth the money. Uh, he definitely helps you with the systems and routines that will keep you on track as well as get you to a place where you can achieve that hundred thousand dollars a year with your business. So moving forward, I promise you at the break that we would start talking not only about systems, but this is the part where we talk to you about the routine that happen on a daily basis for people who are creating the life they want, but are also business owners. And so I don't know why you got into business, but I got into business because I wanted to live a very specific life and I wanted to do it on my terms. And so I have morning and evening routines that I do, and you can read about them in my blogs and that sort of thing. But what I love in uh, bringing on Gary for is let's have Gary chat about Talk to us about your morning routines, Gary. Talk to us about your evening routines because every successful person I have ever met uh, has these routines in place. So I, I, I uh, book or bookend my day like you do. And in the morning, I you can do guest payment anytime, morning, evening. Some people do it both. But I do mine in the morning. I want to program my mind to be aware of the opportunities as I move through the day. But at the end of the day, one of the things that I really do is I need to close my mind off. So I move all the things that I have not been able to accomplish that day into the future. I give it a home. I call it giving it a home. I just just don't let it be out there. And I don't believe in just creating a big checklist. But I created a time management system years ago called PIMA. And what I look for is the things on my list that are what I call productive time. And that's any idea or any item that directly leads to a yes or no to the product or service. And then I look for the things that are indirectly uh, uh, productive. And that's anything that directly leads me to productive time. So the first two are very, very narrow. And then I look at non-productive. And I put that on my calendar. I actually have it divided out on my phone calls and the things that I have to do task-wise. And what it does is it gives me a, a visual way of seeing, am I truly being productive or am I just being busy? And the most important thing about this is since we've been looking at having a balance in our lives, if I'm not getting my personal time in, if I'm not getting my family time in, if I'm not doing the things that make the trip worthwhile me to take the journey, then I need to work something else. But by making it visual and then being able to close my mind off, because I used to say that I was like those dolls back in the day when you laid them down, their eyes closed, so they were like they went to sleep. I would lay down, my eyes would go wide open because I slowed down enough for my brain to kick in and my fear you know, was like, oh man, I'm just, and then I wasn't getting the rest. And so that's what I do on both ends. Uh, bookending your day is something that many Many successful people are teaching their clients, their customers. You're, there's lots of books out there, lots of online programs. And the thing that I know Gary and I agree on is we don't care who you use. We don't care how you set it up, but it, it's important that you do this. Uh, one of my favorite uh, stories to tell is on Ocean's Eleven when they describe the very successful casino owner as a machine. Like he has times of day, he is there at those times of day, and he is running that casino, which is hundreds of millions of dollars that flow through that place, you know, on any given day. And so I uh, just wanted to share that often Hollywood will take somebody that is doing everything right and put them in a negative light. And that was one of the things that made me distraught because uh, that particular casino owner was actually mimicking the behavior that most successful people have. It's just morally, uh, we have different moral compasses, I guess I should say. Anyhow, how would you recommend somebody who probably has never had a morning routine or evening routine? How do you recommend that they get started in that process for 2022? Just do it. Do something. You know, I have a time when I get up every morning, whether or not, now some people don't need an alarm clock. I do. 
And so I, I set my alarm. I, I am up at a certain time. It's the time that I have in my calendar that I start the day. But then I also, and I learned this from Tony Robbins, frankly, he call it the hour of power. I do my get statements. I get ready. I have my cup of coffee. I, I look at what it is that I want. I, I revisit my purpose. Uh, most people have no idea why they're taking the trip. It's these smaller segments or maybe for a hope for benefit later on. Uh, I look at my action steps. The action steps is the second piece of a get statement because you can say a get statement all day long and don't put any effort or energy into it. Nothing's going to happen. And so I look at where I'm spending my time, energy, and money. Is it what it is that gives me a predictable result in those areas? But start with something. Get used to getting up at a certain time. Quit hitting the snooze alarm. Uh, almost every successful person I know, it doesn't mean you have to get up early, but get up at a set time. Because some people, one of my clients, their most productive time is from 10 o'clock at night to 3 o'clock in the morning. They're creative, and it's okay. They don't get up at 6, 7 o'clock. Or some people, one of my new friends <laughs> gets up at 4 o'clock every day. It's, that's also not me, but set something that, see if it works, see if it fits, and don't be afraid to adjust if it doesn't, but don't adjust by stopping, adjust to something else, adjust it small to see if a little adjustment will give you the benefit that you're looking for. So being one of those people who I learned very early on, I had to get up at 4.30 every morning so I could write. And then I would write until my first child woke up and then I had to stop writing. And that's how I got all my, all, many of my books written was through that early morning process, mainly because I would then go to bed when I put my kids to bed. So I started that process. Well, now my kids are grown and I'm still on that cycle. I'm still on that process of where I get up super early in the morning. And you're right. It is an hour of power. And I also agree with you that it needs to start with small things. So start with getting up when you feel it's appropriate for you to get up or Give yourself permission to go to bed when you feel it's time to go to bed. Um, so just out of curiosity, Gary, did you ever have times in your life where, for whatever reason, you woke up and you looked at the clock and it's 335 and you had that happen three or four days in a row? Did you have that happen? And what did you do with that? I got up. <laughs> exactly. Fact, three days ago, I had that happen. Exactly. It was 330 in the morning. I was wide awake. I was inspired. I was, in fact, I was getting ready to do a, a, a talk. And I got the ending of my talk. I got the thing that they wanted to how it's supposed to, it was another one of those nudges. Uh, the biggest mistake people do is they go back to sleep and say, I remember what that inspiration was in the morning and you won't. You get up. You, 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 you're not going to lose the sleep. We have a tendency to sleep too much anyway. And that, that's another thing I, I get a lot of times is people are like, oh my gosh, Janine, when I think of, see all the things you're doing, when do you have time to sleep? And I'm like, no, I've built my life so that I have the refresh and renew. So Gary, we've talked a lot about your boot camp. We've talked about how you have your coaching practice. You have these systems, you have routines. There are things that you teach people. So where can people learn a little bit more about you? Well, GaryBarnesInternational.com is my website. Uh, I answer all my individual emails. It's just simply Gary at GaryBarnesInternational.com. And I also provide a, I really believe in the relationship, in the touching. And so I created something not too long ago that is called FreeGiftFromGary.com. And what it is, it's an invitation to come in and become a, a participating member to my group Q&A mastermind that I do twice a month. And we have people coming in. For, in fact, it, it, uh, we have people coming in right now from South Africa, from the UK, from India, all around the United States. And it's a pure Q&A, so it becomes that mastermind. But I give a 30-day membership to that so people can experience what it's all about. And if anybody, there's no obligation, truly. There, you know me, that I... There's not 13,000 emails that come and harangue people uh, just just because. Uh, but it's something that I found, hey, let's let people have a ticket and actually not tell them about it, but let them experience it. 
and to build and be in a community that not only uh, receives content, but receives community. And you can learn more about that. And I highly recommend that you give Gary an email at gary at garybarnesinternational.com. And that wraps up the very first show of 2022 with the Janine Bolin Show. Thank you so much for listening. We'll see you next Sunday at noon. Have a great day. Thank you for listening to the Janine Bolin Show. Be sure to subscribe to our show notes by going to the JanineBolinShow.com where you'll find additional resources as well as the opportunity to sign up to receive our program in your email each week. Be sure to visit our sponsor at the 8gates.com.